Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia, is rapidly sinking at a rate of approximately 12 centimeters per year. Without intervention within the next few years, there's a risk of the city being submerged entirely. However, there's hope as the Indonesian government is actively striving to protect its capital. What is this grand plan? And will it actually work? Stick around to find out. You must be wondering, why is Jakarta sinking faster than any other megacity? There are several factors at play. Firstly, the city boasts numerous high-rise buildings, holding the world record for the most shopping malls and ranking 12th globally in terms of skyscrapers. The immense weight of these structures exerts pressure on the underlying soil. Additionally, rampant groundwater extraction exacerbates the problem, resulting in extensive land subsidence. Furthermore, Jakarta's location on the northwest coast of Java exposes it to rising sea levels, with reports indicating an annual increase of up to 200 centimeters. Because of this, the city faces recurring flooding and tsunamis, causing substantial damage to life and property. According to reports, the annual damages from flooding in Jakarta amount to approximately $133 million, a figure projected to soar to a daunting $637 million in the coming decades. However, these financial concerns pale in comparison to the dire predictions for the city's future. Experts warn that without intervention, roughly one-third of Jakarta could be submerged by 2050. The situation is becoming increasingly alarming, evidenced by the fact that between 1997 and 2005, certain areas of Jakarta saw over 4 meters of land sink into the sea. With more than 10 million residents at risk, urgent action is important to safeguard the city's future. To tackle this impending challenge, the Indonesian government devised several strategies. One such plan involved relocating the country's capital from Java to Borneo, where they proposed constructing a futuristic city called New Santara, an estimated cost of $34 billion. Additionally, the government implemented a ban on groundwater extraction in the megacity. However, the most notable initiative was the proposal to erect a massive seawall encircling the entire city. Unfortunately, when this idea was first introduced in 2010, it encountered significant opposition from environmental groups and local politicians. They argued that such a project would disrupt numerous livelihoods and cause harm to the marine ecosystem. Despite these challenges, the government continues to explore and pursue solutions to mitigate the sinking of Jakarta and protect its residents and infrastructure. A coalition of environmental and social groups, known as Malay Dadi Segoro, expressed concerns that the proposed sea wall project, instead of addressing the issues of land subsidence and coastal floods, would exacerbate difficulties for the region's residents and the environment. They argued that the construction of the seawall could constrict and limit fishing grounds, jeopardizing the livelihoods of many who rely on the sea for sustenance and income. Furthermore, they warned that the seawall would disrupt natural habitats and biodiversity along the coast, which play crucial roles in providing ecological services and safeguarding both people and the environment. Despite these concerns, the situation in Jakarta has continued to deteriorate, prompting the revival of the seawall project over a decade later. Erlanga Hartarto, Indonesia's coordinating Minister of Economic Affairs, emphasized the necessity of the seawall project during a seminar. He disclosed that parts of Jakarta sink by as much as 25 centimeters annually due to excessive groundwater extraction and urban development. Highlighting the urgency of the situation, he stressed the need for the seawall to prevent further land subsidence and recurrent flooding. Hartarto outlined the ambitious construction plan revealing that the project would unfold in three phases, spanning beyond 2040. The initial two stages alone would require $10.5 billion in funding, although he did not specify the financial requirements for the third phase. Regarding the construction details, the Garuda seawall is designed to stretch 25 miles in length and stand at 80 feet in height. Positioned along the northern bay of Jakarta, these colossal walls will be strategically situated on the bay's east and west sides, to attract private investment. Furthermore, Hatato elaborated on the multifaceted development envisioned for the seawall surface. Spanning approximately 4,000 hectares, it will host various social amenities, including an airport, harbor, toll road, residential and industrial areas, waste treatment facilities, water reservoirs, and green spaces. Additionally, the plan incorporates the creation of 17 artificial islands, intended to accommodate a new sector of Jakarta's population, with an estimated 2 million residents upon completion. 
A deadline of 2040 has been established for the completion of both ends of the seawall project. Meanwhile, ongoing construction involves the creation of a 30-kilometer-long river and beach dike along the coast of Jakarta. Launched in October 2014, this project aims to extend and reinforce the existing dike, which was breached during the severe Jakarta flood of 2007. Set for completion by 2030, the dike's enhancement is a crucial step towards safeguarding the city from future inundations. Looking ahead to the overall project timeline, the entire endeavor is slated for completion by 2050. A key component of this long-term plan involves the construction of a freshwater reservoir within the confines of the Garuda seawall. This reservoir aims to address Jakarta's water supply challenges, which currently rely heavily on groundwater extraction. By capturing rainwater and river runoff from the 13 rivers traversing Jakarta, the freshwater reservoir will provide a sustainable source of clean water for the city's residents. The critical question now revolves around how the Indonesian government intends to secure the $10.5 billion needed to execute this monumental project. Wisely, they have pursued private investment, recognizing that they cannot solely finance it. Erlanga Hartarto, the Coordinating Minister of Economic Affairs, revealed that numerous investors have expressed interest in contributing to the project's construction. The plan entails utilizing a public-private partnership scheme to facilitate this collaboration. Interestingly, construction of the seawall project had already commenced, albeit in a fragmented manner, following the groundbreaking ceremony held in October 2014. This initiative was part of the broader National Capital Integrated Coastal Development NCICD, Master Plan, also known as Garuda. Notably, both the Dutch and South Korean governments have pledged a total of $19 million to fund feasibility studies for the second and third phases of the Garuda Seawall. Their involvement underscores the international dimension of this ambitious endeavor. The lingering question among skeptics and critics revolves around whether the seawall enclosure would exacerbate Jakarta's sinking issues. Some argue that the giant seawall could impede the flow of the city's 13 rivers, potentially transforming Jakarta Bay into a cesspool of sewage. Moreover, since the project fails to address the root causes of land subsidence, critics fear it could ultimately worsen the situation. Parid Ridwan Udin, a sea and coastal campaign manager at the Indonesia Environmental Forum, suggests an alternative approach. He advocates for rejuvenating coastal areas by replanting mangroves and restoring riverbanks to their natural state. In response to these criticisms, Erlanga Hartarto assured that the project's construction would not disrupt the ecosystem. Additionally, Hartarto highlighted the collaborative efforts involving various ministries and stakeholders to tackle the issue of land subsidence. Meanwhile, Indonesia's Marine Affairs and Fisheries Ministry stated its commitment to supervise the spatial planning process for the seawall along the northern coast of Java. Well, that's about it for today's video. What do you think of Jakarta's Great Garuda Seawall Project? Let us know in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. If you liked today's content, do give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.